So this is another image of one of the living rooms in Melissa Caddick's Mac Mansion. Her lifestyle was paid for by friends and investors she stole from. And the latest news I'm hearing is that her fraud scheme might be even bigger than first thought. She was living the good life all right on other people's dime. And assuming she's still alive, she's still using that stolen money to fund her lifestyle. She has to be caught, she has to be stopped. Of course, she's still at large, on the run. She could be anywhere in the world. So the episode on Melissa Caddick on 60, um, 60 Minutes Australia, the first episode that they put up on her, got over a million views in just a week. And then they, um, they published a duplicate episode that was exactly the same. I don't know if it's because their first episode got more than a million views in a week or if it's because they're searching for this person and they want to, um, you know, they want to get this information out to as many people as possible. But I didn't actually know that you can upload and publish duplicate episodes on YouTube. Um, if I if I mistakenly publish a, a duplicate episode, I'm told by YouTube that I can't publish it because it's a duplicate. So I don't know how 60 Minutes Australia were able to do that, but they did. And like I said, the first episode of Melissa Caddick got over a million views in just uh, a week. So Melissa Caddick is about 50 years old. And, um, you know, she stole millions from friends and investors. And, you know, so there's this massive investigation um, going on. And at first, there wasn't actually a warrant out for her arrest. She was just classified as a missing person. And because she's been missing, I think, for about three months now, she's now on the missing persons registrar. The truth of the matter is that she could be anywhere in the world. She has the means to travel. She could be deceased. You know, she could have been murdered. She could have committed suicide. I don't put my money on those things. I think that she fled. But, you know, no one knows exactly what happened. And um, so I'm not saying that she is definitely at large because the truth of the matter is that she could be deceased. Um, I don't want to say this, but I'm going to say it. But, you know, we're in the midst of this pandemic. I think she's going to be very hard to find. And, you know, with people wearing masks and everything, but I just want you to take a good look at her, look into her eyes, look at her face. She's about 50 years old. Um, you know, take a good look at her. Have you seen this woman? She needs to be caught and found. Um, I hate the fact that she's stolen from these trusted friends and investors. You know, she ruined these people's lives. These people worked their lives so they would have a comfortable retirement. And they worked their asses off you know, to build a good life for themselves and she stole all their money. And that's just not right. That's not just not fair. I mean, in, in America, if she was caught, she would be looking at a life sentence, 25 years at least. In Australia, unfortunately, the punishments are not as stringent. And I that really upsets me because I, I would hate a scenario where she's caught and she's only given a five-year sentence. That would not be enough for what she's done at all. Um... But just look at her face, look at her, the picture on the left, the image on the left is where is actually the time when the invest investigators came into her house and were searching her house. You can see she's she's kind of, she's not wearing makeup, her hair's tied back and she's not as, you know, she's not her gla same glamorous self as she's in the photograph on the right. But just look at her face. Have you seen this woman? She really does need to be caught. She really does.